Welcome to Playing Above the Line, where we interview entrepreneurs, business owners, and community activists to get their thoughts and perspectives on leadership. Playing Above the Line is sponsored by Aviso Group, a business consulting and accounting firm focused on preparing clients for the future through innovation and positive growth. Welcome to Playing Above the Line. I'm Alan, your host, and we're excited to be back in our regular format after a, a few weeks of doing the mini series with Coach Riggs. And so, if you guys haven't listened to that, I would, I would encourage you to go back and take a listen. That that was a great way to spend football season. But we are back now, and our guest today is Brandon Beard, and he is the founder and president of Beard Organization. So, Brandon, welcome. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate you having me. Well, thanks for coming. And so, all right, let's just start off. Tell folks about Beard Organization and, and what you guys do. Sure. I'm a real estate appraiser. We complete appraisal assignments for typically lenders as well as individuals who are in need of appraisal services. I'm a real estate investor as well, specializing in single family homes. Gotcha. Okay. So how did you come about doing this? Is this something that you've always been interested in? It was actually a recommendation of my dad years ago. Uh When I graduated from college, I moved back to Mobile. I took real estate licensing classes. And at that particular time, you could not take appraisal classes online. So I waited a few months until the appraisal classes were available. Mm -hmm. I took the classes and then started with MD Bell Company and worked there for three and a half years prior to starting Beard Organization. Okay. And that was back in 2007 that you started? That is correct. Yes. About a week before Countrywide failed, ironically, in the financial crisis. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about. So 2007, at least in this part of the country, real estate was booming. Things were going well. Then 2008 rolls around recession, right? So talk about the process of leading and guiding your organization through what I've got to imagine is a, was a pretty tough time. It was a unique situation. We had never seen property values decline as much as they did during that period of time. And in the early 2000s, we started to see the market increase and increase. And then it reached a point in the middle part of the 2000s. And as appraisers, people always said that we were behind the times, you know, we were working on data that was months old. However, we we had to sharpen our game and keep up with the market as well as changes in regulations from our lenders. It was very challenging. And a lot of that is carried over into our practice even many years later. Right. So, well, talk about then leading your organization through that time. First of all, give me your thoughts on leadership. What do you think makes a good leader? And then give us what you consider your leadership style to be. I think a leader is someone that not only leads, but can really connect with others, with peers as well as associates. And as president of our company, we're fairly independent individuals. Mm -hmm. We are at the office at many different times. However, I really enjoy the interaction that I have in, in helping people and aiding them to achieve their goals as well as complete their work. Gotcha. We also talk about then what you're looking for, for someone to come alongside your beard organization. What qualities are you looking for some in someone to bring on? I'm looking for someone that has a very strong work ethic. Our work is very technical and can be very tiring at times. And so you need someone who has very good energy and definitely has a lot of patience because it's a continuing learning cycle. I've been in the business now for almost 18 years, but I'm continually learning. Mm -hmm. I don't know everything. I will never know everything. And part of it is connecting to those who are market participants Mm -hmm. and really speaking with them and being open to, to changing your ways. Technology is something that has really impacted our business in the last 10 to 15 years and the way that appraisals are ordered from our clients. And that really presents a lot of unique opportunities as well as many challenges. Well, so let's talk about, you mentioned challenges, and I've got to believe, and it's a good challenge, but before we started recording, you were talking about just the fact that the last year and a half, you guys have been wide open. Talk about the effect that the pandemic has had, in your opinion, on on real estate prices. I'll be honest, when this thing first started a year and a half ago, more than that now, I was expecting something totally different to happen in the economy than than what's happened. Many of us as professionals in our field, we thought the market may take a little bit of a dip because Mm -hmm. we had many years of appreciation. However, the market has expanded beyond belief. And it's great and encouraging. It is a bit scary at times, and we do need to be a, a bit cautious And it did present challenges in terms of 
even viewing the interior of properties Mm -hmm. with with COVID. Right, right. And so that really is something that we had to overcome. But the market is is strong, and I don't know what will happen. I'm in fortune telling, so I really don't know (laughs) what will happen in the next year to two or or three Uh years. But I'm optimistic that it will continue on. It may slow down a little bit, which may not be a bad thing. Well, right. But I'm just interested, since I think you have a unique perspective and that you deal with this day in and day out, what, in your opinion, has caused the, I'm going to say boom, because it really has. I mean, especially in our part of the country, values and prices have skyrocketed the last couple of years. Market demand is many times driven by mortgage rates, and mortgage rates are at an all-time low. And I'm not in the mortgage origination business. However, you will find that they are extremely low, and a lot of folks have, have increased their wealth. Right. in the last year and a half and that has also fueled extreme demand and a shortage of inventory and mm-hmm. when inventory levels are low prices tend to increase yeah so how has this affected you as the appraiser i mean i know you guys are probably stretched thin so do you then try to add additional resources as far as people i mean how, how have you kind of navigated this last we year have added a, a staff member yeah. however at the end of the day it takes so long for people to get into our field in terms of their expertise as well as their knowledge mm-hmm. and that's only gained through practical experience so it is important that you find individuals who can uh, gain that knowledge quickly however once again it's built over a long period of time. I got you. So what then has been the most rewarding part for you since you've started your your business? I mean, you're an entrepreneur, you built something from the ground up, which I've got to think is very satisfying. But on a daily basis, what what's the most rewarding? I think the most rewarding is the fact that I'm able to to lead. And mm-hmm. and that direction, we at Beard Organization are all on the same page. We work well together. And so the direction of my client base is another thing. I'm even during the pandemic when the supply of appraisals has exceeded anyone's imagination, Mm -hmm. I've actually gained clients. And I think those client relationships are really important and to expand that even when many people are declining work. Gotcha. So on the flip side, then let's talk about maybe some of the most challenging things, because along with the good, you know, comes not necessarily the bad, but I mean the, the pressures and stresses of owning a business and being the leader and at the end of the day being the place where the buck stops, right? So talk a little bit about what those challenges might be. Well, I can tell you I get to the office every day at 5 a.m. So I, I begin quite early and I typically get home between 5.30 and 7. So time management is, is very key. Finances is, as well. Mm-hmm. You know, Back years ago, billing had declined the first several years of a beard organization. And so finding ways to expand our client base even during tight times was very important. So I'm always interested in people's approach to time management. I think that's one of the, you know, I don't really care how good you are. I think that's one of the most uh, challenging things about, uh, yeah, about working uh, anywhere really on a day-to-day basis. So do you have any tips, tricks, things that have worked for you as far as time management? Goes? Minimizing distractions. That is very, very important. It's easy to make yourself accessible all the time. And so you need to prioritize. And obviously your clients are what keep you in business, but you do have to, to look at who are your best clients, your A, B, mm-hmm. A and B clients, mm-hmm. those that have always been supportive of you in the industry. Okay, that's great. So speaking of prioritizing your time, talk about the work-life balance aspect, because I don't know if you're the typical entrepreneur that I, that I know, but I mean, most folks have kind of a tough time flipping that switch, or maybe not a tough time, but it's, it's hard to really turn the, the business mind off and concentrate on other things in life. So how has that looked for you? Well, I have to thank my wife, Emily, for, for that. <laughs> She's been phenomenal. She's been at home now for many years with our children and would like to get back into the work field, but she's been able to help me with that. And when I come home between 5.30 and 7 in the evenings, I do not bring work home with me. I do not have a home office, and I do not work on the weekends either. In fact, I do not even check my work email on the weekends because that is family time, and that's something that I wanted to make sure that I gave to my family. That's a great 
insight. And I think that with the accessibility of email and cell phones now, I mean, I, I find myself several times over the weekend looking at my phone and checking emails. And I'm thinking, well, I mean, why? I'm not really going to do anything, you know, <laughs> about it necessarily. But uh, that might be the uh, number one tip we can give folks is, yeah, don't check your email over the weekend if you're trying to it's disconnect. Difficult. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what's a typical day look like for you? You get up at 5 o'clock, you're, you know. Well, I actually get up at 415 and it gets even I, better. <laughs> okay. I get to the office, office at, at five, at five okay. and actually I eat breakfast at my desk. Okay. And then my assistant Scarlett comes in about seven o'clock and she's not full time, but she's going to be hopefully full time with us here very soon. We go over emails, discuss scheduling appointments, and then as the day rolls around, there are other appraisers who come in and I talk with them and if they have any questions. And then obviously I'm out in the field a great deal as well, looking at properties. I cover all of Mobile and Baldwin counties, okay. so it is a large territory. So meeting with homeowners and I also price commercial properties as well, property owners in that regard. And then it is a challenge sometimes because I do get home a little late, especially mm-hmm. when I'm over the bay. But I do like to go over there and get as many properties complete as I can. Okay, very good. So talk about then maybe who has influenced you in your journey. I mean, obviously, very successful business. You guys have been around for 18 years, so you're doing something right. So talk about any mentors or influences uh, in your life. Well, I guess first and foremost, my dad has been a great mentor and a leader for me. And he's the one that encouraged me to get into the appraisal business back close to 20 years. It's something that, that he considered earlier in his career. I would also say David Bell, who I worked for for three and a half years, as well as a gentleman who has passed Ben Hamill. Ben always took the extra time to help me out, and I really appreciate that. I'm assuming you subscribe to the importance of having someone mentors, whether they're formal or, or informal, someone who can who you can bounce things off of and, and, and go right. to for advice. That is really important. You know, when you're in an office with many appraisers and people are busy, they have a lot of work and to spend that extra time or that five minutes is really important. Yeah. Okay, great. So talk about your vision then for Beard Organization. We're sitting here in 2021, hopefully on what is the tail end of a pandemic, but who knows. So as you look forward the next, I normally say five years, but really, you know, a year or two down the road, what do you hope to see the organization have become in that time? Well, as I discussed earlier, expanding our client base uh, as well as acquiring more investment properties, I think, or two. And obviously time management. I, I will say over the last year and a half, I've I've become more time efficient and it's tiring, but I I think though that that is really important in embracing new technology. Okay. So when you're not working your 12 to 13, 14 hour days, what do you do for fun? What do you do to blow some steam off and uh, relax? Well, I enjoy playing a little bit of golf. My son and I take golf lessons on Saturday morning. Okay. Enjoy Alabama football games. I attend most of their home games and just relaxing. Okay. Are you a big reader? Do you read? or? Are I you... do read. Okay. So we like to give our listeners, if we can, maybe a book that's influenced you or an author that you find particularly inspiring. Do you have anybody you can point to us? I believe his name is Robert Kawasaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. I hope I said his last name correctly. And I read that back 16, 17 years ago. And the lessons learned it remind me a lot of what my dad has instilled in me and taught me over the years. Gotcha. Well, we were talking again off mic. You graduated from UMS Ride in Mobile. And of course, I went to T.R. Miller and, and, and we've been great rivals over the years. And so uh, if you could go back and tell 18-year-old Brandon one thing that you wish you had known back then, what would that, what would that Not be? Not to worry. Not to worry. Okay. No, I, I really think about it. I worried about things that were insignificant and unimportant. Mm. Just enjoy life great great advice well brandon thank you so much this has been great uh, social media and uh the website and anything else related to beard organization the show notes so folks can go and check you out there i appreciate the opportunity we hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you did be sure to rate review and subscribe on itunes and spotify it definitely helps us in the ratings and it also makes it easier for other folks to find the podcast and as always a big thank you to producer and editor carrie wolf Playing Above the Line is sponsored by Aviso Group. If you want to know more about who we are and what we do, you can visit our website at avisogroup.com. That's A-V-I-Z-O group.com. You can also check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thanks for listening.